What should we know about our understanding of black holes in the formation? Is that an important thing to understand in the formation of a galaxy? Like, uh, so all the orbiting, all the spiraling that's going on, how important is that to understand? All, all of the above. <laughs> that's what makes astronomy really hard, but also really interesting, right? N no day is like another because we always find something new. Um, I want to come back to the, the idea of the proto-galaxy because yes, that actually yes, yes, yes. Ma matches or, you know, relates to, to the black hole formation. So most large, gal well, pretty much all large galaxies have a supermassive black hole in the center. And we don't actually know, don't, we don't really know where they come from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Again, we know that they are there, <laughs> but how, how do we get there? So if we go back to the, to the early universe, right? We had a, a little galaxy that just sort of, you know, I don't know, had some small number of stars. It was a first gravitationally bound structure that, that was held together by dark matter because dark matter actually kind of f structured up you know, first before the luminous matter could, because that's what dark matter kind of does. And it 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 started to hold um, gas and then stars sort of together in these first very shallow, um, what we call potential wells, so these gravitationally bound systems. And then the Milky Way grew from absorbing neighboring smaller, even smaller systems. And somewhere in that process, there must have been a seed for one of these supermassive black holes. And I'm I'm not actually sure that it's clear right now kind of what was there first, <laughs> the supermassive black hole uh, or the galaxy. So lots of people are trying to study that. And of course, the, the black hole wasn't as massive back then as it is these days. Um, but it's that's a, it's a big area of, of research. And the new um, James Webb, the JWST, the telescope, the infrared telescope in space, is um, is working on. Many people are working on that to to figure out exactly what what happened. And there are some some surprising results um, that we really don't understand right now. So, so to solve the uh, the chicken or the egg problem of uh, do you need the supermassive black hole to form a galaxy, or does the galaxy naturally create the supermassive black hole? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think to some degree we. We can answer that because there are lots of little dwarf galaxies out there. You know, the Milky Way remains surrounded by many um, dozens of, of small dwarf galaxies. I have studied uh, a bunch of them. And to the extent that we can tell, they do not contain black holes. So there certainly were gravitationally bound structures. So either you can call them proto-galaxies or dwarf galaxies or first galaxies. They were definitely there. But there must have been bigger th things like the proto Milky Way, where something was different, right? What made them more massive so that, you know, they would gravitationally attract these smaller systems to to integrate them. So we'll have to see. How, how do we look into that, uh, the, into the, the dynamics of the formation, the evolution of the proto galaxies? Is it possible? Do they shine? I mean, what, what are the set of data that we can possibly look at? So we've got gravitational waves, which is really insane that we can even detect yeah. those. Um, there's light. What what else can we? Uh... So that that would fall into the category of observational cosmology, yes. and the the JWST is is yes. the prime telescope right now to, and it promises big big steps forward. This is in its early days because it's only been online like a year or so. Um, but that collects the infrared light from the farthest, like literally proto-galaxies, earliest galaxies. That light has traveled some 13 billion years to us, and they are observing these faint little blobs. <laughs> um, and folks are trying to, you know, again, study the early, the onset of these early supermassive black holes, how they shape galaxies. So they're, they're seeing that they are. They were there, you know, surrounded by already bigger galaxies. Ideally, I'd like for for my colleagues to push a little bit further. Hopefully, that will eventually happen. <laughs> in terms of looking towards older and older ones. Yeah, yeah, and more, more and more sort of primitive in terms of the structure. But of course, as you can imagine, if you make your system smaller and smaller, it becomes dimmer and dimmer, and it's further and further away. So we're reaching the end of the line from a technical perspective pretty quickly. <laughs> But it's dimmer and dimmer means older and older. Um, yes, in a sense, because 
it all started really small, yeah. right? Because it's smaller and smaller, yeah. which correlates to in, older in, and older. In, in that phase of the universe, it would. Otherwise, it, it doesn't. 